So we're in chapter two. Now I believe you've looked at some of the early questions in chapter two and so and also some of the theorems that are there. So I'm going to review them briefly and then we're going to dig into two of the harder questions that kind of pull together all of these ideas and principles. One of which is this one, okay? So first, just so the seed is kind of sown in your mind, um, have a look at this guy, right? Pretty standard, like this whole chapter is all about very simple kinds of shapes. Um, Euclidean geometry is beautiful because all you need is a, um, you don't even need a ruler, you need a straight edge, which back in Euclid's day was a big deal, that even without actually measuring things and knowing the, the actual the actual lengths that things are, if all you have is a straight edge, you've got enough geometry here and enough relationships that you can work out how things relate to each other. So with just a straight edge, and if you wanted to, we don't need one today, um, a compass, you can know a heck of a lot about something and be able to understand it very comprehensively. So within this triangle, right, you can see they popped in these extra constructions, and then they give you some ratios and a single measurement. You get these two ratios here, so this length to this length, one to four. Um, this length to this length, so that's these two sides over here, two to three. And then they just give you the whole area of the triangle. Okay? They ask us for these last um, pieces down the bottom. They want this um, pink triangle down here that I've colored. And then they want to work out how do these, these two sort of, well, they're not really diagonals, but how these intervals going across, cutting across the triangle, um, how do these things relate to each other? We call these intercepts. Intercept is a funny word because we use it to mean lots of different things in mathematics. Um, but it is context where you've got intervals that cut across each other. Um, these are called the intercepts on these intervals. So what are the ratios between them? Now uh, the key is that we don't need to measure any of these things. We don't need to measure any of them. I mean, as an example, how do we usually work out the average triangle? How do we usually do it? Well, at the moment, we only really have one mechanism, which is base times height on two. So you'd need to know what this length AC is, you'd need to know its perpendicular height, or I suppose you could define anything as the base and therefore get the corresponding perpendicular height. But the point is, you need to know some lengths. You will learn pretty soon enough. Um, remind me, have you met much trigonometry yet? Yes? Yes, you have? Okay. So you will learn pretty soon that one other important way for working out the area of a triangle is using trigonometry. If you have no base and perpendicular height corresponding to it, it's equivalent to have two sides <coughs> and the included angle. If you know what those are, like for example, if you knew what like, AX was, length CX, and if you knew what this angle AXC was, you could use this and you could find out the area. Okay? But kind of the whole point of this is that this can vary about, that this, is, this can be a different set of shapes and it might have a different set of angles or a different length down here in proportion to these two. So how do I work this out, this area, without knowing any of those things, okay? All I have is these ratios. So I want you to have this sort of settling in your mind. We're gonna draw this diagram and we're gonna work with it further um, as this lesson progresses. But, I'm gonna put this away now, uh, and you can make the heading, if you like, of, um, parallels. We're going to be drawing a whole bunch of diagrams and working out how to relate different areas and lengths together when all you have is ratios between them. Okay. So I've got, let me count them, one, two, three, four. Four little sort of theorems or properties for you and again I'm going to blow through them fairly quickly because I know you've seen the early ones before, so this is more just a, okay, have it in your mind so that it's sort of like fresh as you go through the um, challenging questions. Four little properties, and I'll give you the wordings for each, but the most important thing is the diagrams that you draw with each of them. Okay. So, let's do the first two as a pair because they kind of fit together. Would you draw for me, please, um, for each of these two properties I'm about to show you, a pair of parallel lines. And um, I will just also note, if you have colors here, if you have colors like color pencils or highlighters or color pens or anything like that, they'll be enormously useful. Get them out as many colors as you possibly can. In geometry, geometry is so much a problem of vision, right? If you can see a question properly, if you can see through the maze of lines to what really matters, then you can often solve the question very, very quickly. Okay, so I'm gonna use quite a few colors today. <laughs> So, like I said, 
For these two properties, you'll need a couple of parallel lines for each. Right, property number one. If you've got a pair of parallel lines and you create a set of triangles between those parallel lines, triangles like this, Okay, so if you have a look at these, right? What I've got is a set of triangles that are bounded between these parallel lines, but importantly, importantly, here comes my first other color. Um, each of them, oh, this is a bit off, let me fix that one. Each of these triangles is not only between the parallel lines, but they also all share the same base. Let me pop that in here. Okay. Now, because they're all between the same set of parallel lines, the distance between parallel lines all the way along, like the distance from here to here, the perpendicular distance between one parallel line, the top one, and the bottom one is always the same every single time. Okay? If you like, you want to think about it this way. I could construct a set of rectangles all the way along here. They all have the same height. Okay? Now, because if I did that between these parallel lines, I'm always going to get that shape. For example, if I put in the perpendicular how to say this triangle. <coughs> you can see, because that line is perpendicular between those two parallel lines, it's always going to be perpendicular no matter where I move it. So, for instance, I could move it over here. And it would still be perpendicular. I could move it inside here. And it would still be perpendicular. Okay. Now the reason why I've drawn all three is because now it kind of makes clear to you every one of these triangles, you remember at the beginning um, I asked you how do you work out the area of a triangle, right? Well at the moment you need two things. You need a base, and you can see these all have the same base, and you also need the perpendicular height. And these all have the same perpendicular height, okay? So here comes the wording of the property. I'll say it once and then I'll say it again slowly so you can write it down if you'd like. But the important thing is the diagram. Triangles on the same base triangles on the same base, between parallel lines are equal in area. That's it. It's not crazy. Triangles that have the same base between parallel lines have equal area. That's all that's there. Okay? And I kind of think the diagram um, says that for you. Again, they're all triangles. They all share that same green base down there. And because they're between those parallel lines, that's what gives them all the same perpendicular height. So therefore, same base, same perpendicular height, equal in area. Okay? There's the first idea. Now the second idea is kind of like that, but just slightly twisted. Okay? If I stay between these parallel lines, okay? let's draw a new pair of triangles now. So if I go Okay. Now, unlike in our first case, where you've got triangles on the same base and between the parallel lines, so therefore they're all the same, they're all the same, you can clearly see these two triangles not the same, are they? They're not the same, and so I'm going to colour them a little bit differently to indicate that. So over here I've got this skinny guy on the left, so let's, let's do him in blue. And then off on the right we have this one that's slanted over a little more. Choose angle in it. Okay. Now in this case, because I'm still between parallel lines, even though these triangles are very different, there's still one feature, and I mentioned it in the first property, that these two triangles share. What's the property they share? The perpendicular height. Very good. That's what those parallel lines are doing for you, right? Every single triangle, wherever you draw them, I could draw them all the way over here, same perpendicular height. Okay. So all that's different between these two is their bases. Now if I just like name these bases, let's call this length over here A, and we'll call the base of the other one, very originally, mathematicians always know for that kind of thing, B. Okay. If the ratios of their bases are A to B, A to B, because the only other measurements that, that is different is the perpendicular height, but that's equal in both cases then here the areas were all the same. Here the areas are not the same, but they're in 
this ratio. Can you see that? So for example, if I actually called um, the perpendicular height of this H, as we oft often do, okay, what would the area of this actual triangle be? The, the blue one. Yeah, very good. It's going to be um, the base, which is A, times the height on 2, right? So that would be that would be this area over here. I'll call this A1. This one over here, A2, everything will be the same except I have a different base, right? It's going to be base times height on 2, except my base this time is called B, okay? Now you can see here, whatever H is, it's just uh, a positive number. This 2 here, it's not a positive number. So just like any other set of ratios, this area 1 to area 2, I can simplify it, yeah? I could multiply both of them by 2, I could divide both of them by H, and I find that the areas are in the same proportion as the bases. Does that make sense? So this is this particular case where they have the same base, so they will have the same area. I guess it would be A to A, which is 1 to 1. Okay. But here, because the bases are just that little bit different, and the height is the same, the area of the triangles, those proportions will match the areas of the lengths. 